Hey there, Knicks fans. How you doing? It's your boy, John of the Macri, with you for another episode of the Knicks Film School podcast. Coming at you to uh, start another week of playoff basketball. Another week with no Knicks basketball. Uh, but things are spicing up. Yes, they are tingling on the tongue uh, in NBA land as uh, teams are starting to get knocked off the board. And uh, intriguing storylines are beginning to develop. We are going to uh, touch on some of those briefly. But first, as always, introduce my co-host, my better half in the podcasting world, Jeremy Cohen. Hello, sir. Hey, John. How are you? I just watched two really fun basketball games today. I'm feeling delightful. I watched the end of the Warriors-Grizzlies game. A hell of an end of a game. It was great. Fantastic end. Um, you don't need to watch anything from the Milwaukee game other than the Giannis alley-oop to himself. I did see that. You did uh, see that. Okay. I, I saw the end of the second quarter okay. of that game. Um, I was happy with the result of that. So it's I'm, I'm feeling good about my uh, ranking the Bucks as the number one contender left uh, in, for our... I saw Andrew's giving me a look like, do not give away any of the content that we record on a Patreon um, episode. No, that part was in the free section, John. Oh, so it was? Okay. It's okay. And I'm also feeling good about ranking the Warriors. Number one. That's fine. Uh, that's good. You know, I, you. I'm not feeling good about putting the Celtics number two, though. I'll tell you that much. Well, it's, it's, it's early. Your, that's your loss. Listen, it's early. I, yes. You never know. Anything can Thank happen. You. <laughs> um, I'm also very comfortable ranking Philly eighth. That's last thing I'll say on that. Poor Embiid. That's F, all. Poor, poor Embiid at Philly. Um, so Amen. we got a <laughs> we got a cap or no cap coming up uh, in a bit. But before we get to that, just very brief word and i say brief word now because there will be slightly more extensive words in episodes to come um about a team that plays in utah um so 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 sorry for their fan base just a great set of fans out there in utah really feel for them uh, <clears throat> uh but yes the jazz lost uh <laughs> sorry couldn't help myself uh the jazz lost they are eliminated and this should we call it an era of jazz basketball whatever it's a it's a it's a it's a time period where they had some success. Sure. Um, Listen, I, here, here's the thing. Yeah. I was about to, it, it's going to end. Let's just it leave is. it at that. It, inevitably it is. But there is this um I think the credit you can give them is the fact that they lost Gordon Hayward and they turned around and had Donovan yes. Mitchell. Yeah. And for Good a job, small market team that's tremendous and uh shout out to Walt Perrin who is now in New York. So um all's well that ends well. And, and Johnny Bryant and Johnny Bryant. Yes. And Johnny Bryant's replacement. I don't know if you saw this, John, was arrested um, in a scandal. The, yes. I, yeah. Thank you. I did see that. I'd forgotten that, but we've. It's a yes. Bad week for Utah. Bad, bad week for Utah. Um, and of course, the, the obvious sentence to say next is uh, potentially a very good week for the Knicks, right? Um, maybe. We'll see. Again, we'll we'll talk about it in the weeks to come. I mean, the Donovan Mitchell noise is, is going to be out there. For my, I just want to say very briefly my two cents on this, which is that um, I think there are a lot of. Again, I don't go on Twitter that much anymore, but my my understanding is that there are a lot of takes flying around um, in terms on of uh, on the Twitter dot com uh, the app takes on Twitter. No, <laughs> no, John, it's very nuanced. Here's what I'll say. I think like any 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 team gets uh, ends its season. It's good to take a, a few steps back um, and, and let it kind of marinate. Donovan Mitchell did not have a great series. Um, and I would just say that, you know, it go, it's part of his body of work, right? Uh, certainly counts. Uh, I, I think should his name start to come up at some point this summer, um, I would not, if I was a Nick fan, which I am, uh, I would not be like, oh, this is terrible. We don't, we don't want this. Um, you know, we, we don't want to make a huge trade for this guy. I think Donovan Mitchell is still very good. Is he the best player on a championship team? Eh, well, we'll maybe talk about that in a bit um, or that concept generally. Um, I also see a lot of the Gobert stuff and people having uh, notions about the Knicks potentially training for him. Again, we will talk about it in, at the appropriate time. Um, I, I don't think that they're going to probably be in the running for Rudy Gobert. Um, and I don't think that that's the worst thing in the world. Uh, Jeremy, any, any thoughts? I don't think 
they will be in the running either. I don't think they should be in the running. I think I, nor do I. A, is a hell of a player, but I mean, for a guy who's essentially going to be thirty years old or is thirty years old, and next season, he's just not the, the money he's making. Yes, he, could you consolidate in some way and have him be that guy? Of course, could. But you can also find centers not who are as good. But I try to figure out a phrase this because I think he is worth more than people seem to think generally. Like I think there's this consensus that his contract's so bad that teams aren't going to be interested. And I look at a team like the Hawks and they're terrible. Num- number one team to look. And I just think like, this. okay, Capella Herder, the Hornets first round pick. Like if the, if the Hawks can find, if, excuse me, if the jazz can find something better than that and they might be able to, how does that impact the, the value that the Hawks are sending out? Or does he go somewhere else? And like with that type of deal, they it's the sort of thing where maybe they don't get better or they get worse at one position, but they get a little um, deeper. They get a little wider. They get a little better. They, you know, like whatever it has to be. Uh, I, I thought that kind of went through. All right, never mind. Um, you know, like the sense of being able to try to become a better team as a whole, but maybe not having a defensive player. That's like, you can't just skip like over that. <laughs> I thought, I thought I was, was. I thought I was hearing things. <laughs> Me too. I was like, "Did he say?" And then I saw you start to smirk. It was like, "Jeremy, this is why you are one of one." I love you, Jeremy. Wow. Good. Good. Good transition. Rudy Gobert is also one of one. Very unique player in the league today. The best at what he does on one end of the floor, um, and yet uh, he's unique because he's just someone that is. He is. I don't know how else to say it. He's, he is limiting at the other end of the floor. There are things that he just can't really do very well on offense. And, um, you know, I, I think the Jazz were kind of between a rock and a hard, not between a rock and a hard place, but like they were never going to let him get away. They were never going to be like, eh, we're not sure about the ceiling of this team. Like, let's, you know, dang, like, no, they were going to pay him whatever it took to get there. And they'd be like, all right, let's ride and see this, see how far this, this train goes. Well, they saw how far the train could go. And um, it, it's it's limited in part because of Gobert's limitations. Again, incredible player, but you're talking about spending what is effectively a third of your cap on um, a guy who is, I don't want to call him a one-way player because that diminishes some things that he can do on offense, but like it's, it's a different, the reason I bring up like the Jazz were never going to let him get away. It's a different question for a, the team in the Jazz's position when they resigned him and continued to build around him versus a team who might be looking to trade for him and say, all right, we are taking the proactive step to bring this person into our, into our team and then have to make all of the necessary accommodations to attempt to, we're not hundred percent sure if it's possible, but to attempt to build a team that fits his strengths and weaknesses. And I just, I don't see the Knicks with where they're at being like, yeah, we're going to take on that, you know, that, that challenge. I would agree with that. And, you know, some of the other players on the jazz too, that might come up or might be of interest to some fans, you know, the idea of Mike Conley and how you structure a deal with Randall. And again, like the, the, I, we talked about Julius Randall and the, the fact that we feel that the Knicks need to find a way to move on, but there's also going to be, like the sunk cost feeling for New York, which is that they're not going to dump him for nothing because if they did that, then it would essentially be acknowledging that the contract was a mistake. And I'm not even saying the contract was a mistake. I think you could view it in a variety of ways. I don't view it as such as we've talked about, but doing something where it's like you get a 35 year old Mike Connolly in the building, like that just doesn't seem like great business to me, especially well, since might, the year might be after. Done. He might be done. And the year after it's like this large percentage of partial guarantee. So are you fourteen million him, of 20, right, are you paying him fourteen million million dollars yeah. to not play, or are you yeah. paying him twenty four million dollars to play at thirty six years old? It doesn't seem great. Like there are conversations about, oh, should I QB starting and this and that, and should you bring another point guard? Like bringing in Mike Conley to start ahead of Emmanuel quickly might actually create a war amongst fans. Uh, well, and again, if there was some really hot young player on the Jazz or if you could feel pretty confident in a draft asset you were getting to do some kind of kind of a deal where you're sending Randall, you're sending whatever, then like like that's a different that's a different story. Um to say nothing of the fact that like helping the Jazz get better in the short term, you know, how does that impact with all the Donovan Mitchell stuff, which again, we'll, we'll dedicate an episode to that at a later time. Um, so without further ado, let's get into this week's, uh, 
cap or no cap, which I'm very excited to talk about. So, Jeremy, what have I, I as always, you don't really let me in on what these things are about or who they're about or anything. So I am I am waiting with bated breath, sir. Fantastic. Well, I've really enjoyed creating this one because it's a it's a different step than what we've done in the past. You know, before it's much more I don't want to say it's theoretical because it is realistic, but it also just talks about a general concept that I think sometimes gets swept away because we talk about stars, but it's, you can't like jumble a lot of these players together and say like, Oh, this star is in the same category as that star just isn't the case. It's like, to me, you have superstars who lead the team um, are going to be MVP type guys, all NBA consistently. And you have your stars who are, really good players, but they're not necessarily going to be the, you know, the type of guys to bring you to the promised land. And I think it's really important for us to try to make that distinction and then work to see how the Knicks can go about doing that and succeeding. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have a superstar and you're not like the Pistons from the year that they won the title, then you're really not going to go as far as we as fans want the Knicks to go. So what was originally going to be a Donovan Mitchell conversation kind of grew into this. And I want to say, because we won't be talking really about Donovan Mitchell much is like my perception of Donovan Mitchell didn't change drastically from where it was before the series to now. I never really viewed him as a top 10 transcendent player. And this series certainly didn't help, but it was the sort of this process. I'll say top 10, just to to be to clear top 10 in the league, at any time he has been in the league. You're not talking like, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, And in terms of, you know, like how he also impacts a team, we know how good he is in terms of an 82 game schedule. We've seen glimpses of 16 game schedules and your 16 wins, you know, but there are also some concerns and again, we'll address those more, but this was very helpful because it still kind of like gave me the idea of how we can maybe think about what went wrong. Look at what went right. And just kind of go from there. I'll, I'm going to my very quick two cents on this, and then we'll get into the presentation is I as 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 of you and as a, as Andrew been watching the sport a long time. I feel like we could kind of simplify a superstar with this. If at no point in time. There was ever a conversation about whether or not you were the best player in the sport. I don't think you're a superstar. I think at some point in time there, I'm not saying you were ever like you were ever considered the best player in the sport, but unless that, that was a conversation that took place even briefly, like, uh, I don't know why this is the first name that came to my head, but like Tracy McGrady, there was a hot second where you're like, "Is, is Tracy McGrady the best player in the NBA? Like you were like, Six and Chris Percy Iron wasn't born yet, but um, <laughs> sad but true. Probably, um, there was a hot minute where it was like, you know, and we could go through other guys that maybe had that blip, had that moment. That to me means you've achieved superstar status because there's only, you know, I don't know, we don't have to put a number on it, but it's it's less than 10, right? It's probably more than five, but it's, probably, it's less than 10. Um, number of those guys in, in the game at any one point in time. So I think that for me personally, that's my baseline. That's a good baseline to start with. So indeed, without further ado, I will uh, bring us into this and then we can start to go about it. So if you are what you say, you are a superstar. Shout out Lupe Fiasco. Anyways, yes, given the conversation, superstar versus star. This is how I personally see it. uh, John, again, feel free to kind of weigh in here. But a superstar for me is consistently on the MVP ballot. Frequent All NBA appearances, perennial All Star, uh, and a first option on a contender. And a star is much more someone who isn't really a recipient of MVP votes. Uh, you know, they have some, but not a lot of All NBA appearances. They're a multiple time All Star, but they're not a first option on a contender, right? So, like, I look at someone like Kyrie Irving as a star, and you can look to what yes. he's done in the past, yeah. and yet it's like, well, when was he a first option? On he wasn't. It was LeBron James. LeBron James was someone who in a lot of ways carried him and Kyrie Irving was exceptional in that postseason. I mean, specifically the, the, by the championship series that they won. 
but it's still like you're not going to see Kyrie racking up a ton of MVP votes. You're going to see him making all star games, which is a lot of fan popularity focused. Um, but you're not necessarily going to see him being a down ballot all NBA guy consistently. I mean, obviously, COVID aside, but you know, and injuries, I get it. But he to me is like someone who is incredibly gifted and a star, but the impact on winning. And the ability for him to do it by himself versus with others. And again, we can even talk about with the Nets getting swept with others, yeah. how that impacts his star status, which is why he's a player for me who is much more a star just to create the context of where we're operating for today. Yeah. And I'll just, I'll, I'll throw in briefly in terms of the, like, it's not, you could be a perennial all-star without being a superstar. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to like, okay, I, I don't, I feel bad throwing this guy under the bus, but like Ray Allen made 10 all-star teams in his life. Um, it was never in this, but he was always in that. I don't know if he's the 12th best player in the NBA. I don't know if he's the 22nd best player in the NBA, but he was always somewhere, you know, in, in that range. Um, and at the same time, and again, I cannot believe I'm 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 going to get fucking raked over the coals for this. He's not a superstar. He was never a superstar. But Reggie Miller, at one point in time, could be the best player on a championship team because though he had something kind of unique, something special. He had my God, a set of cojones in the in the big biggest moments of the biggest games. And guess what? He he made it to a final and he was the or an NBA finals and he was the best player on that team and they ran into Kobe and Shaq and that was that. So like he was not a superstar. I just want to be very clear about that. He was not, I, there were times where I, I don't even know if he was like a, a true star, but like it's not always black. It's like we're, we're trying to make a black and white and this is not a black and white conversation. Inevitably, there's going to be some gray. Perfect example, Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo Anthony made, I think, three all NBA teams, mm -hmm. you know. Um, was never was not regularly in the MVP conversation. There is a world where that guy was the best player on a championship team. I believe that. And I'm not a you guys obviously know I'm not a really big mellow guy. I truly believe that because you have to have certain qualities. You know, we're talking about Carmelo Anthony, Reggie Miller, not too similar, or, or those are not guys who are similar to each other, but had that certain it, uh, uh, je ne sais quoi. Is that, just gonna say je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi yep. Where you either you know when you see it. You know, and um, but in a perfect world, you're not picking nits and you're not parsing hairs. And it's like, yes, we know when we see it. Superstar. Very clear. 100 percent. So how do you acquire a superstar? Well, first and foremost, it's the draft. Look at these teams that have superstars. The majority of them have drafted and developed players. But what's that? <laughs> uh, Andrew's informing me. Did he really make six? Yes, six. What well, you're you referring go. to is how many first six team, all NBA teams all, for yes. He made four third teams. That's right. That's what it was. Yes. Okay. Four and two. He never made first because he played right. in the same era as LeBron James, Tim Duncan, and Kevin Garnett. And Dirk yes. Nowitzki. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Carmelo. Yeah. So six. Just, just just get his bona fides right. That's, I, uh, that's all my I bad. That's my bad. It's okay. My bad. It's okay. It's okay. It happens. Strike one today. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> So the draft. Sorry, Jeremy. The, anyway. the draft is the first Continue. one. <laughs> the second one is you can trade for a superstar with less than or equal to one year of team control, right? Like Kawhi Leonard, Carmelo Anthony. Guy, and I'm not talking about years left in general. I'm saying team control, right? Like they're oftentimes the superstars have player options. So they're free to decline that option, but the team doesn't really have control of it unless they're able to, you know, work something out. Uh, the third is trading for a superstar that does have multiple years of team control, but that player is going to be older than 30 years old, right? It's um, it's like Kevin Garnett when he went mm. from the Timberwolves to the Celtics and they did an extend and trade. It's kind of like James Harden where he was with Brooklyn and then he opted in to the next year. So he had more than one year of team control, but he was also older than 30 years old. The fourth is unrestricted free agency. Uh, keep in mind, unrestricted free agency, not restricted free agency. And then the fifth one, miscellaneous exceptions, right? Like um, James Harden, before he was truly a superstar, but on the path when he was Good traded call. due to financial reasons in OKC, or perhaps, and we can talk about whether we consider this player a superstar or not. It's actually, to me, he's incredibly polarizing. Uh, Paul George, when he was traded from the Thunder Oops. to the Clippers. Just below. Was just below. Right. 
just below the line. But see, yeah. Andrew, you're going to look it up. Paul George has had like eight all NBA appearances, has led the Pacers to several or led the Pacers to several um, Eastern Conference finals as the best third, player. Third place um, MVP. Right. Finish he's, like, he's had a couple top 10 MVP finishes. So like there's a case for him. I, again, like you may not want to trust him and he had the whole pandemic P thing going on. But like you also look at what he did last year without Kawhi Leonard. And it, like, that's the thing. It's as you said, it's not all black and white. Sometimes there's more gray to it. I, and I just want the situation for why. Yeah. I just want to be very clear about this, um, that we are the five points that you just went through in terms of the ways to acquire a superstar are under the. I don't want to say the current rules of basketball, but like more or less the current rules of basketball. Cause like Shaquille O'Neal decided to change teams after four years and he could do that back in the late nineties. Like that was a thing that could be done that you cannot, it's a, it's a different sport now in terms of how it's run. Um, and then just one other one I'll add, I guess, no, this guy is Chris Paul superstar. Cause he also changed teams uh, in a weird Weird, weird, weird scenario after uh, six six seasons. That's another good yes, one, I think. He did, but yeah. and again, I'll have him on the list shortly. But he only had one year of team control remaining, and he was only oh, that's right, yeah. Oh, because so, he signed for three, he extended for three. That's right. It was a yes, different yeah. situation. So, okay. or and he might have been four, and then he, but then after the third year, they realized it was something funky. Yes. Uh, so with Paul George, it was six time All NBA, one first team, five third team. That's that's a really good resume that's the thing yeah. like again maybe he's not going to be the best player you'd think that if if he were then the clippers would have maybe beaten the wolves but um then he was absent for the game against the pelicans so regardless those are the five kind of ways to go about getting the superstar yeah and I, if you look up and down at the best you know all of your any player you think of as an unequivocal superstar that has been around for the last 20 years you're not going to find anyone that has changed teams other than Harden, right? Um, and we just talked about Paul with other than one of those situations that you just brought up. I, I'm right. pretty sure, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at the last 15 years for superstar level trades, right? And again, we can quibble over whether or not they were this or that, but um, just for the context, right? Kevin Garnett, 2007. He was dealt in an extended trade multiple years over the age of 30, as I mentioned. Carmelo Anthony, 2011, had one year of team control left. He did an extend and trade. Uh, for those who maybe don't know what an extend and trade is, basically, you extend with the team you're currently on, and then you're dealt. Um, it's basically like sign and trade, but extend and trade. How rare is this? It's really only happened with these two guys. It just it doesn't really happen now, and a big reason for that is because you can basically a team can acquire your bird rights and then pay you 8% raises as opposed to the 5% raises that you'd get in extended trade. The reason Carmelo Anthony did it was basically the pending lockout. And I believe the reason Kevin Garnett did it was, well, he just was very committed and Ray Allen was there and it worked out. Yeah. And obviously Ray Allen was acquired in the trade, but I digress. So it's separate trade, but yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, that summer, yes. Um, Chris Paul, 2011, he had one year of team control left. Dwight Howard, 2012, when he went to the Lakers, one year of team control left. Um, Paul George in 2017, one year of team control left when he went from Indiana to OKC. Kawhi Leonard, 2018, when he went to San Antonio, Toronto, one year team control left. Same thing with Anthony Davis in 2019. James Harden in 2020 had multiple years, as I mentioned, but he was over the age of 30. Um, and similarly with James Harden in this past year, I mean, be very who, generous. Yeah, stuff considering we don't, a I, I, right. I just figured for the sake of you know, that's fine. So again, for the sake like, of completeness, it's fine. Right. So this is the example of how it happens. And when you look at a lot of these guys who are superstars, and you look at your own team, you're thinking, well, the Knicks don't currently have a bona fide superstar. So how are we going to go about getting them? And then you have to think, well, these are the parameters, right? And you have to think about free agency and. And all these different factors. And so the bottom line here that I want to mention, though, is if you're a player who's on the trade block and you have more than a year left of team control and you're below the age of 30, you're highly unlikely to be a superstar, right? Like <laughs> we're going to talk about the way you phrase this. I like the way you phrase this again. Like if it, even if Utah does not wish to trade him, um, the idea that he is even potentially on his way out. And again, I understand there are other circumstances that maybe he doesn't want to be there. Maybe he sees the writing on the wall. Maybe Utah is basically prolonging uh, the agony and should just rip off the Band-Aid right now. And I think all of that is tremendously valid. 
But at the same time, there's a reason why the best of the best don't go anywhere until like they absolutely have to go somewhere. And we have not reached that point. But if said player is, you know, potentially gone before that, it kind of answers everything we need to know about like, is he a superstar? Is he a star? I, I, um, I want to just chime in on a couple of things. One, this is great. Uh, two, um, it's interesting that Jimmy Butler, he, 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 so he got traded with two years left on his deal. And Jimmy Butler, to me, when I think of like, who is the best non superstar player in the league? I, I, the first thing that comes to my mind is Jimmy Butler. So I think that's appropriate that you, that you've sorted it out this way. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate for just a second. Um, James Harden qualified for your list based on what, based on the qualifications you you have, which are very smart. Um, Might not, might not we get a situation at some point where somebody goes to the extent that Harden has done to get himself off of now, not one, but two teams. And, and what has Harden done? He is, so flagrantly like disregarded all common decorum when it comes to things like showing up for work in shape and like trying even a little bit on the basketball court, like is not somebody who is a very clear superstar, but it is, you know, whatever, several years off of the deal, whatever the case may be. Don't you think that someone at some point is going to come and pull a hard and just be like, yeah, I'm not going to give a fuck until you trade me where I want to go or at least trade me. Yes. I mean, we did kind of see that with Jimmy Butler, but again, I'm with you in that he, to me is like the guy right below that superstar level where he's like the highest of high star performance, but it's just hard for him to knock on that door to get to superstar status. Yeah. And, but you know, like he look at, all he did to try to get his way out of Minnesota. And it worked. He was traded to Philadelphia. It did work. <laughs> and he got what he wanted, but it just didn't, it didn't pan out for Philly. And, you know, that team will always to me be very much of a, what if they had built around Jimmy yeah. Butler and Joel Embiid instead of Ben Simmons. And of course, I'm sure Philly fans are thinking that, you know, in similarly, like what if we didn't trade Zaire Smith for Mikhail Bridges? And, you know, again, I don't want to drive a stake into the hearts of, Philly fans who I'm sure are you know absolutely listening to this. But yes, I'm with you. I don't think that James Harden this year qualifies for, for superstar status, but he does for like for those who might feel like, ah, eh, you know, he does, but he's had a weird year and his hamstring and blah blah blah. It's basically like, okay, if you consider him this, it still falls under the same criteria. So it still it still pans out. Could honestly wipe him away and point to the Kevin Garnett. Example yeah. and it's it, it makes all the same sense. I I just I guess I'm just talking more generally. Like, what when is someone really going to push it? And uh, maybe we get it, maybe we don't. I, I um you know I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll find out. I guess. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break to tell everybody about our good friends at Prize Picks. And Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Um, you can place a wager. We're doing overs and unders. And you can can select anywhere from two to five players and potentially that they'll hit the over or their under on picks for the night. So um, just looking at tomorrow's games, guys, what are you thinking? So Jimmy Butler, 23 and a half points. James Harden, 23 and a half points. I I actually it's it's funny because I've we've as we have all done grown accustomed to crapping on James Harden. Mm -hmm. I kind of love the Harden over over with points beat out. Yeah. So really are do. you liking it over? Like, do you think you'll have a monster game? Cause let's go to points, rebounds, assists, and it's 40. So 25, Ooh. 10, so 26, 10 and five gets the over. I, Hmm. Here's I'm trying to think what I like more. I think I might like this a little bit more. What do you DJ got? Jeremy? Tucker was on Trey young and shut him down. You think he can shut down? PG- oh, potentially. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, are, are we going to see the ball more in Tyrese Maxey's hands? Is so let's. It's going to take more of a role. So let's go back to points then, and he'll at least get his points. Assists—that's nothing. That's out of his control. 
You know, he doesn't have and it's a one less player I'm, with him beat out. So let's let's stick with points for now. That's fair. OK, let's look in. Let's look in rebounds. Also, I should add, we also well, oh, no, no, actually the way you could do it. Let's stick to one game here. Let's just do Sixers heat. Here. Sure. And then assists. Let's look at Bam Adebayo's last five games. He has Ooh, had, that's so cool that you could just show it right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. So he's had less Four, than one, five, five assists five. three out of five times and his over. Wow, so he's hit over five, over, over for the three and a half, I guess. Here, um, I don't. He's hit the don't over three times. But he barely hits it. Yeah, I don't feel good about taking it. the under. I don't feel good about taking the over on this. Okay, let's see. Aiden, it's two assists. You think Aiden can hit two assists? Uh, that's a different game. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, you know, you know who what I kind of do like. What, different Jimmy? game though. Chris, Chris Paul, I mean, the dude's a superstar. Oh, All he has to do is get 10 assists. One of the more automatic things is, which is funny because I took the over on Paul the other night and he hit the under of eight. It, it was, he hit eight and it was, I think 10 was the line and he hit yeah. under. Thank you, Chris Paul. Um, superstar. Superstar. Chris Capital Paul. S. Yes. Capital S. Um, let's go to rebounds. Sure. So nine and a half for Bam. Hmm. You'd think he's their center. Of course, there's 10 rebounds out there for him to get. Well, Bam will have his six rebound games. He'll also have yeah. his four rebound games, which is not fun. Um, so I actually, I would, this is a very strong stay away. Jimmy Butler, though. Six and a half is a nice number. I like six yeah. and a half. It's a, it's a good number. It's a good number to set it at. But again, it's like, eh. Um, if anything, again, with him beat out, I like Tobias Harris getting in the muck a little bit more. Ah, so that's a good. Ah, you know what? That's actually a good call by John there. Look at this. His last yeah. five games, he's hit over seven yeah, and a half. And his one under is seven. Yeah. So let's go Tobias Harris over. Yeah. I like um, that. Now so we, we could stop here if we wanted to just go over, over. And the value on a $20 wager would be 60 to win. So it's just, there's no additional odds. It's just you get both right. It's three times the play. Um, then put anything on future Nick Jalen Brunson tomorrow or no, fortunately there's no prop bet for that. Oh, Oh, for Jalen Brunson. Yes. That's what you, I thought you meant. Will Jalen Brunson? Yeah. Yeah, Can he be a Nick tomorrow? Is what you're saying? Like, can we bet that, um, Jalen Brunson, you could do points, but again, we're going to stick to Sixers heat. You can do, you can cross game. Actually, you know what, John? Brilliant idea on the fly. We can cross games if Let's we want cross. to. Let's cross. Cross okay. the streams. So what are you liking about Jalen Brunson? 18, 18 and a half points. It's uh, three assists. And that's actually like the number is three assists. So oh, he's hit over consistently or at least even throughout the playoffs. I think the safest thing is points. He has gotten actually, his points consistently throughout the playoffs. He like, has. Chris Paul guarding J- Jalen Brunson in this series. Or Mikael Bridges. That's a good point. Well, if they're going to Mikael Bridges, would probably spend more time on Luca, wouldn't he? That's very true. Well, if they're switching, yes. I kind of yeah. like the under one on here. one. You like the under? I kind of like the under. Under here, eighteen yeah. and a half points. I, I think I like the under. I think this is. I think it's. It might take Dallas a minute to get adjusted to playing a, a real defense. John, what do you think? Uh, you're John. Jeremy, what do you think? <laughs> I don't hate it. Listen, I mean, again, okay. the, the Jazz had a very porous perimeter defense point of attack was, you know, taken advantage of consistently. And I think John's right. There's something to be said of like taking time to kind of figure it out and go through the motions and game one goes to the suns and they're able to have a better defensive uh, experience. Can we do one for the heart real quick? So Reggie Bullock, go for it. Former Nick, two and a half, three pointers made big game player. This has been Reggie Bullock throughout the playoffs. It's exactly three. So I think he'll hit three tomorrow. Okay. Yep. So we got the over. It's also a shot you live with if you're Phoenix. Exactly. It's good. I mean, it's not coming a shooter, from, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so then we have one more we can add to this. Now, just to give everybody a look, if you wanted to do a regular flex play, if you get three right, um, it's one and a half. So you would end up getting 30. So on a $20 bet, you get 30. Um, if you get all four, it's five times the value. So you get a hundred on a power play, which is 10 times a $20 bet gets you 200. Hey. So if you get all four, which as we laid out might actually be possible, you get all four. I um, like that. Can I throw another in there? Let's go to baseball real quick. 
So pitching outs. Oh my okay. God. See how many so of these players see... I know who they are. Jeremy, we're gonna get Jordan Montgomery going six innings tomorrow, five and two thirds to be exact. I think he could do it. Problem for Jordan Montgomery hasn't been pitching. It's been the Yankees hitting when he pitches. Right. That's true. So sure. I I one thing I've, I'll show you guys later. But one thing I've been doing is either like low strikeout totals for strikeout guys, like Max Scherzer's in a in a flex play that I did the other night, or like you're telling me this guy can't go six innings is what I've been been doing lately. So like. I'm not doing Chris Bassett because they finally learned he goes six innings every time and they were doing 16 and a half, 17 uh, outs, okay. and it's like, Oh, he needs to get through six innings. Um, what's funny. The night that Tyler McGill was the starter for the no hitter, his prop was his line was five and a half, uh, not, not five and a half. So he had to go five and a third. So it was 16 was the number and he pitched 15 outs because they took him uh, out after five because it was pitched. Uh, yeah, I was today years old when I found out that Steven Matz was a pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. Yes. The Mets mm-hmm. played against him the other night and they knocked him out in the, the fourth inning. And then they got Good for them bench clearing brawl in the eighth inning. Even um, the hater and Andrew should pick the under for Steven Matz. Yeah. Pick, pick He's the actually under. been getting rocked lately, but the, so pick the under you just saw, but Jeremy, you just watched the Royals. This is a get right matchup for him. I did, but also the Yankees are a really good team. Okay. So uh, Oz would disagree. <laughs> that, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Shout out to our group chat. Yeah. So you think, all right, you know what? Steven Matt's under. I dig it. Okay. Done. So if we wanted to, it's the same principle. It is, the only option is the flex play. You get three right, you get a quarter. So it'd be you get like eight bucks back. Um, you get four right, you double up. So you go from 20 to 40. And then obviously on 20, on all five, you get uh, 10 times what you wagered. Now, let me show you an example from the other nights, at least a couple nights ago. Um, Actually, Monday, now I'm thinking about almost a week ago. Wow, this week went a while. So this is the closing game for the uh, Nets and Celtics series. I got four out of five. Um, Okay, that's good. I took the over on Marcus Smart because he's just been hitting every over, especially in that series. Um, on points. So that I got Jason Tatum, uh, the near superstar, Jason Tatum. Um, again, free throws. I, I thought six and a half, like the number kept going down too. It was like, Oh, there's seven free throws for him to get. And the number kept going to like, we actually are saying six and a half. We're actually saying six. And he just got it every time. Um, Kyrie Irving, man, let's talk about not a superstar uh, had a great game one and then hit the under on every point total that they had for the rest of the series. In fact, a lot of unders for Kyrie, the rest of the tough, series, tough break for a good guy. Yes. Um, so he hit the under on his uh, point total. And then Max Scherzer, I had this in four different flex plays over seven strikeouts and he hit 10 by the sixth inning. Nice. Um, so Max Scherzer and then Kevin Durant, the one game he decided to go off, I took under 40 and a half points, rebounds and assists. Mm-hmm. And he had, Obviously, fifty-five that night. Uh, Good job by you. So that's an idea, but that's an idea of an overall successful. I doubled my money that night. Um, an overall successful prize picks wager. And if you also would like to do have, be successful with prize picks, use promo code Film School, and they will double your first deposit up to a hundred bucks. So if you want to play with a hundred bucks, they'll add in another hundred bucks. Just go to, again to prizepicks.com, the website that we just showed you. Use promo code. Film school, prize picks, daily fantasy made easy. Let's do a true or false here, John. It's basically <clears throat> the cream of the crop in 2022. Ooh. So we're going to just look at these stars or superstars and uh, yeah. mm-hmm. sort them. So, first one, Nikola Jokic. Can Andrew it's, chime in on this? To, it's his quick yes, please. No, right? I, so, okay. I, no, if, if Andrew disagrees, I want his opinion in here too. 100%. Okay. So let's right, go. One, uh, let's go, uh, Jeremy. So Nikola Jokic, Jeremy, absolutely a superstar. Uh, I, yes, I said, <laughs> <laughs> analytics hater. Uh, yes. Are you going next, or am I going to keep rattling? You, you read the name. Sorry. True. Yes. Go Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yes. True. true. Yes. True. Okay. Great. Joel Embiid. True. 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 Luka Doncic. True. 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 Jason Tatum. True. True. Didn't get an answer from John, though. Did we? 
Can I? Oh, John. Oh, John, come on. John, he's a superstar. He is. Can I, can I pause? Yeah, okay. Can I and come then, back to it? Um, again, like, are you trying to sort people into a top 10? Yes. Or are you? Because I, I, I am of the belief but, that there are only so many of these guys in the league at one time. Right. But like, there could also be 11. There could be 12. Like if the immense amount of talent that's there, and I understand it because we're talking about <laughs> distinctions, right? Like if you're not getting an all NBA, it's because you're snubbed. And if you're snubbed, why is it? Is it because you're bad or is it because players ahead of you are just better? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I know he laid an egg in, in game one against the Bucks today, but he's a super. No, I don't care. And it's, that's not why I'm, I know I was just, there's a, a jab name, in there where I could. there's a name coming up in a few that if Jason Tatum gave you pause, Oh no! I'm, then, I'm listen. I I take this shit very seriously. So I'm. I look. I will give Tatum the benefit of the doubt, but I I want it noted for the record that I had to think about it. Okay. That's okay. So, but we have at least come to the agreement so far of yes. five names for true superstars. Yes. Stephen Curry. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Devin Booker. No. That's funny because I actually view him as a superstar. Okay. The efficiency, oh. the scoring, the uh, the ability, like you know, so many great scoring guards just don't care about defense. And he certainly does. And I think that the fact that he's able to do that as well puts him into this category where it's not like to me, a Bradley Beal type player again, like his offense is better than Bradley Beal's, but he's better than Bradley Beal. But I, I just, I'm, I, I have to go with my gut here. I'm just going to, I, again, it's, it's, you know, when you see it, Andrew, what, you, you haven't said anything. I'm also a no, but it's, it's like, I believe he can be the Suns' best player in the system that they have and the offense and how perfectly well run that team is. I think he can be like the finals MVP this year, which is why this exercise is interesting. And yet there's a reason. I don't know if you take him out of that, what that looks like. Now that's, that's not his fault. You know, like, I don't know what, I know what Jokic looks like not on that. Although I do, when you take away Jamal Murray and I don't, Michael Porter Jr., I know what Jokic looks like. I guess my yeah, thing and he, with and he still looks like, like the best player. Oh, anyway, yeah, I, I guess it's a no, but it's like it's it sounds so disrespectful if I think he's because to your rubric, Jeremy, this is a guy that struggled for a while to consistently get on All Star We're, teams and All NBA teams and all of that. But it's keep in mind, he's also Super younger, star. right? Right, but. But he's also a younger player other than Jason Tatum. He's young, or I guess Luca too, right? Like he's still a younger guy. He's making his way. Like when Chris Paul was out, the Suns didn't miss a beat with Devin Booker as their best player. Actually, no, he is. No, 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 no. And now, now that I'm doing the math, like this might be the time that he has finally risen to that. But yeah, Devin Booker is a superstar now that I look at it. Okay. But the way that it, we're grading by the rubric that Jeremy was talking about. And keep he's going to make going to make first or second all NBA this year. He's now a perennial yep. all-star might be the best player on a finals team. He's a superstar. And Look, he's also I, 25 years old. Mm-hmm. I think that the thing to consider is that so many of these great talents, even some of them who we've mentioned did not really hit the gas pedal until their seventh, eighth uh, year. I, like I, I don't Steph just, is lucky because I don't say lucky. Like he's, he's incredible and he's, a, he is a superstar, but like you look at how long it has taken. I, I'm not trying to lump Devin, Devin Booker into this conversation, but just as a pure example, Michael Jordan didn't, his, didn't win his first title oh, until, on. but you, you're no, missing, it's an example. Right, it's let, an let me example. just continue That's what I'm saying. Before continue you, the example. You know, Michael Jordan didn't win his first title as the best player in his team. 30 certainly. years old, right? 30 years old, LeBron James. It took him how long? Until he went to Miami and finally was able to win something. And like, what was it? His eighth or ninth year? Ninth year. Ninth year. year. Nine. So the point is that you can still be a superstar player. It's just a matter of like, are we also going to view Devin Booker right now in 2022? Which, yes, because that's that's the prompt. That's what I'm saying. But you also have to consider in a few years from now, right? Like, some of these players might be aging out when Stephen Curry is perhaps 39 years old. Are we still going to consider him a true superstar? That's the... Not exercise I did in my head, Jeremy, is I looked at the rest of the list like, oh, I actually do put him ahead of this person, ahead of this person. And it's because these guys are in their 30s transitioning into different parts. And, and I Devin Booker has ascended to that level. He might be like changing nine of the 10. guard. Yeah. He might be and like I nine think, or 10. Right. But yeah, and I, yeah, I think there's there's a difference between saying like he's a rat like he's 10, 9, exactly, Andrew, or like mm-hmm. he's a top five guy. It, like I think you can have sub levels within these superstar categories, but at the same time to me it's like no so no, no, hold on. I have to I have to speak up. No, you can't. 
You can't. There is no sub level of superstar. There is Giannis superstar. Antetokounmpo is the best player in the world as far as I'm concerned. And Nikola and Jokic yes, had a better season. Does that make Nikola Jokic a better player than Giannis? I don't think so. All so again, all uh, all of these guys that we've said so far: Jokic, Antetokounmpo, Embiid, Doncic. And this is why I, this is why I hemmed and hard about Tatum because like those four and Curry and Curry, if it's a game, one game, you got to win. And it's like, all right, you're getting one guy. You get one guy for this game. And you gave me those five names. We've just gone through now seven with Tatum and Booker. Like, I don't know who I'm taking first. I don't know who I'm taking second. I don't know who I'm taking third. I know who I'm taking fifth, uh, sixth and seventh. Tatum and Bick, Booker in some order. The fact that I clearly have can delineate that. And whereas it's Jokic and Tedekumpo and B, Doncic, Curry. I'm, I'm starting to ask questions. Who else is on the roster? Like, have are, are they like this? That, that's to me, that says all you need to know. But that's but it, Ellison. I'm in the minority apparently here. But the, here's the thing, though. You're saying one game, right? Well, OK, we just said Stephen Curry is a superstar. How many NBA finals MVPs does Stephen Curry have? Oh, that's nonsense. Well, no, but but, but that's my further, point. If Jeremy, you're saying yeah. that you have to, like, if you have one game, right, or one series that everything matters, you have to be the best version, and that is a true superstar, then by that logic, like, that's not Stephen Curry. And we know Stephen Curry is a superstar. I, like, it's not about, hey, Andre Iguodala won finals MVP, so he's a superstar. He's not. But that's still the whole point of like, you need, if you're looking at these guys and you're saying like the best of the best when they win, like we saw Giannis have a 50 piece last year in the clinching game where they scored like a hundred I, I I points. It. I know you did on a bum knee. <laughs> like, like there's a difference between that level of dominance when it really mattered and what Stephen Curry has done in his finals experience. And it does, I'm not saying it takes away from who Stephen Curry is as a superstar. I I'm just saying, did. if you're talking about one game or one series and we have evidence of a superstar who has been absolutely elite, one of the best players we've ever seen, but has not brought his a game repeatedly when it matters most. And then you're saying like the same thing in terms of how it transitions with like how you wouldn't have Devin Booker. You wouldn't have Jason Tatum as like one guy in line. It just, it doesn't feel like it's, it's, it feels like a mis mixed message to me is all John. It, yeah. Hold on. So the, the example you used the one game. So why didn't Steph win a game in the play in last year? Those are literally one game sample sizes where he like willed his team played his yeah. best and lost in both one game scenarios. I understand. That's the scenario that a saying everyone... one game for the human race is like fun, but like at a certain point, like obviously other circumstances matter. Also, Luca just got to the second round for the first time in his life. Yes. So to say all of that one game needs to happen. He's lost that one game a lot. Uh, I am just going with uh, have every superstar in NBA history mm -hmm. has had a game of massive importance where they did not have a great game. Mm -hmm. So maybe that example is not the, the best example. Um, I just. <laughs> it's your gut reaction. Yes, it's my okay. goal. Like if I'm going into a big game or a big series or a big season with Steph Curry on my team, as he is right now, I don't know when he's going to age out of this. Um, I'm going to feel I'm going to feel pretty, pretty comfortable. Um, and, and, you know, it's like, you know, we're, how do you account for like, you know, he swept in 2017 and 2019. Um, the Warriors swept teams uh, out of the Western Conference Finals um, in 2015. They won 4-1. Steph Curry averaged over 30 points a game in all three of those series. He averaged 36 and a half points a game in their 4-0 sweep of Portland in 2019. It's like, I, you know, what do you do with this stuff? I don't know. Well, let me ask you this, though. I mean, you're talking about one game. Like, this, this is what came to mind in games four and five of the NBA Finals last year. Booker okay. put up 42 <laughs> Uh, and they were efficient. And like we also just saw this year before he dapped up a baby and, and got hurt. Not saying it was the baby's fault, but maybe it was like how red hot he was. And I efficient understand from the, like it, it's not just to be like, oh, he's a bucket and, and a hooper and you move on. And like there's there yeah, are levels. Awesome. Right. So but, but that's, hold on, Jeremy, I have a I have a thought here then. So yeah. as a result, Jeremy needs to continue the list and I need you to apply all of that to the next guy. Of Kevin Durant, yeah. without question, yes. You paused on Jason Tatum, <laughs> who just played him off the floor in a series and swept him four out. 
Also, what has Durant been able to do as the number one player where he went with Stephen Curry and was then able to be his best self? That dude had the best playoff series I've ever seen. Or no, you know, I've ever seen. He had the best playoff series I've seen for a player in maybe LeBron James had a better playoffs. I'm sure LeBron James had a better playoff series. I'm not thinking of, but the, the playoff series Kevin Durant had a year ago against Milwaukee was as good as anything I've ever seen. And this year, his coach played him 45 fucking minutes a night every game because Kevin Durant, the GM did a shitty job of like, you know, trading for James Harden and then James Harden, you know, stopped trying and had to be traded and they traded him for a guy who couldn't play basketball and Kyrie Irving vaccine. Yada, yada, yada. Like the, like Kevin Durant was cooked. Like he had nothing left. He's a superstar. Sounds like, a a super, sounds like something who did a superstar Stephen would Curry, overcome, Jeremy. I don't know. Yeah. Who did Stephen Curry have on his team in last the play-in. year yeah. in the play in. I feel like he's a bit. Like, are we out. really talking it's about not, this? No, we we are talking about this. Not because it's it's putting one down. It's just it's if you're using the logic of like the one big game or the big series, and then you're going back and saying like, well, with Kevin Durant last year, he had an incredible season. He did, but Let last me, year was also on. last year. And we're Can talking I see? about this year with considering moving forward. Are and we I not? think for the record, Jeremy and I would both have Kevin Durant as a superstar. Okay. 100%. Can I, can I just a polite request? <laughs> can I see Jason Dayton be the best player on a conference finalist? Can I see? We did. We saw it. But, uh, we, Jason Tatum? When they the played Celtics, when the, they went the to the Cavs conference series? finals. Yeah, yes. the Cavs series. Yeah. When they and got they blew absolutely, it to, that was a weird year. They got smoked by the Cavs. But, but, or by not a great just asked, seven. You just what asked you for about? when he can be the best player on a team that wins the conference That's, finals. And I just gave you the they, time where he did it. And he was 21 years old. They lost to LeBron in seven. Le- and, and they won the first two games. Game. Yeah. <laughs> that was a deceptive seven game series. But, and it was a terrible Cavs team. It, this is they but lost to LeBron just asked for it and I just gave it to you. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Like, there okay. are examples here. I just blew Tatum, out the three wins, too. Now did. I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's because that Cavs team was awful. You're now pointing to it's, teammates <laughs> to now say, like, that's what I'm talking about. If teammates don't matter, then like a superstar should be able to overcome it. Like, there was LeBron never did. a point in that series where anyone was like, ah. Oh, Jason Tatum, LeBron James, who's the better player? If you are a superstar, a superstar with capital S, and if you go up against another superstar, the conversation at some point in the beginning of that series, middle of that series, end of that series will be, which of these guys, like at least Tatum, this past series with Durant, there was a conversation. Who's the better guy? And Durant, you're right. Or or excuse me, Tatum had the better series. I still want to see a little bit more. Devin Booker. Who's the best player in the Suns? Was it Chris Paul's Devin Booker? I don't know. This year, it appears that Booker has superseded him. Do I really think that Devin Booker is the most important player on the Suns? After I watched the Suns defeat the Pelicans in game six the other night with Booker doing a lot of nothing and Chris Paul having a generationally like a, amazing game. Like I still have to ask that. question. I, 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 I you know that. when this you say Okay. So Chris Paul, then I, I, I do. One. I do just want to also take one moment, though. I don't want to revise history here because the whole thing with LeBron and Tatum for that series wasn't has Jason Tatum eclipsed LeBron. It was Jason Tatum looks legit and is on track to do things that LeBron James has done, because look at how young and how talented he is. And then, of course, LeBron James okay. was like, yeah, hey, I'm LeBron James and uh, I'm going to win the next four out of five. And they did. That but, block in the third quarter of LeBron that gave the, that put the Celtics on a 7 0 run to make put them up seven. And then the 19 year old didn't realize, oh, I should take over the game. And then the, the Celtics went cold. I don't like happens. that I remember that game from heart. <laughs> okay. By the way. Look, maybe okay. Tatum gets there this year. You may get there in a week or two weeks. I don't know. I'm not there yet with him. I'm right okay. there. I'm, here's where I'm at Jokic, Antetokounmpo, Embiid, Doncic, Curry, Durant. That's six yeses for me. Uh, Chris Paul is a no. Chris Paul is a no. So you have no superstars in the Suns? No. That's why I don't think they're going to win a championship this year. That's why I've, I've that is consistent with what you said. <laughs> it is. <laughs> wow. See, I, again, I, I think I like there's disagreement there, Jeremy. I got to be honest. No, I like there's disagreement. It's fair. Here. It's fair. Um, but I, I honestly see Chris Paul as a superstar. And I think okay. from, from like his entire career and the fact that he certainly was looked at as one of, you know, 
players on the worst contracts in the NBA to come back from that to legitimately play incredibly well. Like to me, the Suns, it, it's funny that you view them as having no superstars. I see them as having two superstars, but they may not be like top five superstars, right? They're still in that cutoff range, but but you're still getting guys who are, in my opinion, superstar caliber. And, and again, there is zero question who the best player in this series between Phoenix and Dallas is. And the fact that there is zero question about who the best player in the series is to me, tells me all I need to know about how many superstars are in that series. There's one. But again, I, you could say Luka Doncic is a better player than Devin Booker and Chris Paul. And you could also say that there's still all. No, players. you can. Oh God, we can go back and forth. You like, can. Again, Clyde Drexler was not a superstar. Even though when he went into the series with Jordan in 92, people were like, hey, I don't know. This is the best. Next John, guy. That, that's, that's not he's not a superstar. That's he's not Michael Jordan. Like that's that's a difference there. It's so the LeBron Tatum thing into it. I mean, obviously difference in Tatum and Drexler in this situation. But like, again, if we're comparing one of, if not maybe the greatest players of all time and then saying, like, how do they stack up to them? First of all, if you're even questioning that as you said like if there's ever a thought then that just goes to show something's going pretty well but it's it's a very different situation to say like hey maybe you're not one of the greatest of all time but you're still a superstar you can you can have both of those things be true at the same I have time one follow up question and that might so when michael jordan was playing how many superstars were there in the league i think that's a great question um it's also a little funny because like you had a guy that on like on paper was a superstar. And yet if you watched him, you knew he wasn't in Carmelo. Um, mm-hmm. But so Shaq was a superstar. Shaq never well, won a title against Michael Jordan. I don't care. That guy was a superstar from the day he stepped foot on a basketball court. Um, and there's also other stuff to consider like Grant Hill. Grant Hill was a superstar before he got injured. Um, never made it out of the first round. I don't care. That dude was that dude would but, have had so then winning has nothing to do with whether you're of a superstar course it does, but sometimes sometimes superstars are on teams that are not very good. But it happens. But okay. you're saying that on one hand the superstar has to raise the team so well that that's why they're superstars. On the other hand, it's like, well, but no, I didn't say their team. I don't think I've said that. You, Andrew, am I, am I that's what you here? said? That I, there's no question if this person went up against this person who's better. And yeah, like the weight. Okay, so then how do you deter- you determine who's better by who scores more points or who wins games? No, it's just you know it when you see it. You know it when so you then see it. That is but, the definition. Like how Charles is it like- Barkley. Charles Barkley was unequivocally a superstar. And I, you know what? For one series against Jordan, he gave it everything he had. And there were moments where you're like, you know what? Yeah, Jordan is the better player. But like, man, Barkley's giving it to him right now. And like, you never had that sensation with Malone because Malone was like, you know, he was Malone. So Very does it have soon. to be one-on-one? In terms of playing that superstar in order for it no, to No, it doesn't matter. Like, Hakeem Olajuwon, superstar. Hands down. Patrick Ewing, not a superstar. Ooh. You, you thought they were going to be mad at you about Reggie Miller. But look, I got you. David Robinson. Analytically, there are some analytics that say he's one of the fucking 10 greatest players. Not a superstar. You know? But would you consider Hakeem Olajuwon a superstar if Michael of Jordan course. never left the NBA? Because that would a big factor of Olajuwon's it, career is that he was able to win the MVP, that he won two titles while Jordan was gone. The two years that Jordan was gone, that if dude, he doesn't win a championship or he two, came up huge so often, but but so, so like, many times there are other other stars and superstars who did who. As Andrew was talking about, like if they're not Michael Jordan, then who? Guys whose careers were not the way that we see them because of the fact that they didn't win a title. <laughs> there are superstars. Barkley, there's no question in my mind that Barkley's right. a superstar. He didn't win a title. And I not Robinson that, or but... Ewing? No. Wow. So you're you're like a small hall guy when it comes to like how I'm that way with baseball, where it's like I'm trying really to really another guy to impress me. So is Scotty um, Pippen a superstar? That's a great one. That's one of the that's one of the most fascinating ones I think in NBA history because we that's I don't think so. My gut is to say no. My gut is to say no. Okay. Um, okay. Because he was, I think he was meant to be a number two. You know, but, but is he? We also saw Scottie Pippen without Michael Jordan, and he did 
a pretty damn good job. It's like well, a Hubert Davis fan to fall away from getting to the conference final. He, right. He, like he, he the way I see awesome. it is, is, is Scotty finish, Pippen, like finished fourth MVP, Pippen, third or fourth in MVP voting that year. Yeah. yeah. Scotty Pippen, not a superstar because he played with Michael Jordan, who is a vastly better player because he was Michael Jordan or was he a superstar the whole time? And Michael Jordan's just a better. Player? I don't know. I wish I knew the answer to that question. I don't know. This is All a right. fascinating conversation. I got to be honest. This is one of my favorite conversations you've had on the pod. Yes. Go ahead, Jeremy. Next question. Um, next, next, next player. Anthony Davis. No, I also say no. I say no. But again, like this is a guy who it, it, here's the thing. You can't say or you can, but I don't quite get it. Like if Grant Hill and his injuries is a factor, but for Anthony Davis, when he was perennial, MVP ballot guy, all NBA to be uh, clear boy winner. Like I'm saying now he's not like he right. used to be that's, like now okay. he's not is what I'm saying. Uh, that that's where I stand as well. Okay. He was, right. So we're saying that at one point he was a superstar, but now he currently is not. Yes. There's a thing that I don't know if John I, was doing. I, I'm this, not saying that, but maybe it's, I am I, we can all agree. He's not one now. I am yes. saying this that because I don't know if John was doing this, but there's a thing we do with a lot of guys in the Western Conference over the last five years that it didn't win or get out of the Western Conference where they just kept losing to the Warriors. And it's like, oh, well, you never won anything. It's like, yeah, because they played the best team ever assembled, arguably. So, like, I'm not going to get mad at AD for losing in five to Katie and Steph. I'm not going to get mad at Dame for not getting past the Warriors three separate occasions. You know, like I'm going to we didn't gonna, get to Dame yet. I okay. Then I, I'm saying Dave Davis used to be, and at this point in his career, availability matters a lot, and I can't count on him. And as well as the fact that I think he's also like his shooting av- ability is not what it used to be either. So I'm bumping him like right outside the uh, the OLI, the outside looking in for Anthony Davis. Okay, so we, I we swear to God, if, I swear to God, if the next guy's a superstar, I might oh, join Jeremy in driving to Brooklyn with you. To get Trey Young, no, no. Okay, he could Go be. Ahead. You can't he be could, a one. You can't be a one way. You can't be a one way player. Be a superstar. That's the DH. <laughs> yes. Uh, Kawhi Leonard. Zero question. Yes. yes. But see, that's the other thing. Like that's another guy who didn't even play this entire season, and I feel comfortable saying he is a superstar. But we I'm are also too, yes. looking at lines where it's like. This guy is because of injury, but this guy is because of injury, but he's the other direction. So like if he comes back and he's not the same player, then I'll change my answer. But until I see that and I've seen this guy come back from injury once and be as good as any player in this, and, and have the best playoff game, I think I've probably ever seen. Um, so, sure. yeah. OK. Uh, LeBron James. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Brandon Ingram. No, I say no as well, but I think he could very easily get there based on what we saw. It seemed like a glimpse into uh, quite a good future. But again, like, is he then a superstar or is he just like the high level of star, but knocking on the door of superstar status? He doesn't get there. Okay. I'll say no. I'm not putting him above Tatum. I'm not putting him above Tatum, but okay. it would not be like, it would not be shocking to me if at one point we were having a conversation about like Tatum and Ingram. I think, Tatum, I think Ingram's really good. I, I do too. I okay. I'm just saying it's surprising to hear that, but then have a hesitancy on Tatum and Ingram being no. Like if you're saying that these are two guys who might be neck and neck for like who is the face in a lot of ways of basketball, but at this point, neither of them is even in the running, really. I don't think either of them is in the running. But then I then why No, would sorry, be- I should say Tatum is in absolutely in the running for superstar status. I I do not think Ingram is. I just think Ingram could like be. I'm just saying, sure. uh, it would not shock me if at some point you get there. But that's not the conversation right. we're having right now. Let's go to the next name, Paul George. No, no. Um, like that's the thing. I, I you know, because I've talked about this in the past, where I have slandered Paul George, and I've had to reconsider that slander and take it back because I think that when all is said and done, when you look at the body of work that Paul George has put together, it is actually superstar caliber. The only thing is that then is like, well, he was injured this year, but so was Kawhi. And Paul George was able to help keep this team remain afloat. And then you talk about, well, the talent and the superstar and the players around you. Like, again, I, I, I still think he is like very much borderline. But if you had to get me to say yes, I, I honestly would feel comfortable being like lower end. Potentially, yeah. Again, there are no... <laughs> 
There's no lower end. There are no I, ends. That's there a, are I, no ends. But but there the are higher there end. There's are, no lower end. There, but there are because again, there are, though. it's yeah. Giannis Antetokounmpo to me, and then like the rest of the field, and then leading that field is guys like Nikola Jokic, it's Joel Embiid, it's Luka Doncic knocking on the door. Like that is where it, like, I think there's a very big difference between a superstar and a star. But the reason I say that is because the difference between a star and a non-star. The gap there is closer than it is from superstar to star. Let so, me okay. Can I hold on? I have a question to ask oh. you, John. So your one game scenario, right? So can when I, the can I alter the, that a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. And here's what here's and let me try to phrase it differently. Mm-hmm. If Giannis and Tedakumpo, who we're, we're I guess all putting at number one, okay, fine. I don't even know if I want to do that, but fine. Okay. I am now and Oh, we, let's just get the last name out of the way. Damian Lillard. Yes for you, Jeremy. I'm at yes. I, I'm going to say yes, but I don't love that. I'm saying yes. There's like, there's like a, a, way, think, a, a chance that this could be the last time I say yes. If he comes back and he doesn't, if he looks he, like he a lesser is, version of himself, but he is in the Kawhi Leonard camp of like, Again, he's been so dominant that it's a yes until proven no. But I also could see the argument for why next year it is simply a no. Yeah. In the same way, I'm not holding Luca uh, at fault for not getting out of the first round. Dame's having 60 point playoff games and losing. It's not his, like, I don't blame yeah. him for that. You know, I'll say this is the toughest one for me yet. Um, but he is, but he's, this is where I am holding injury against him. More than Kawhi, one small guard, two getting old. Um, we saw some slippage in terms of some some percentages and whatnot. Uh, I he's my I think he's my I, at some within the last year I definitely would have said yes. Mm-hmm. I definitely would have said yes, but he's. It's not agree just to me if you say no because of like yeah it, it's like a, it's a point. no it's a no and and you know what I I may go I may flip on Tatum but he, so let me give you my thing and then you could respond. Go ahead. Giannis plays in a playoff series with, and I'm just going to go through the players that I have as a yes for superstar. So Antetokounmpo, Kupo, Jokic, Embiid, mm-hmm. Doncic, Curry, Durant, Kawhi, LeBron James. I have eight superstars. If Giannis goes into a, a series with any of those guys, and then at the end of that series, we turn around and be like, player X, whichever one of the other seven I've just named, right? outplayed Giannis in that series, every, no one, no one would bat an eyelash. It would be like, okay, yeah, because it's insert your player name here. If anybody else on this list out, outplayed Giannis and you're like, wow, oh, that's pretty impressive. Even Tatum, even Tatum, I think if he outplays Giannis in this series, we're going to look at and be like, wow. Jason Tatum. Now, maybe that is what elevates him. But as of now, we're still in the wow phase. That to me is why he's not there. Did but Durant the just get outplayed by Tatum? Right. In the series? And not just that. I, we and you I, just said that it didn't matter about playing head to head in order to determine what comes next. But now you're saying that it does. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm using that as an easy like that's to me the easiest when you like you know when you see it like that's the easiest thing to look at right there but it's still you know when you see it I agree with you Tatum did outplay Durant in the series we just got through and I think that was a watered down version of Durant who was running on fumes superstar now, to me doesn't get watered if down he's a superstar like, then yeah. he's a superstar yeah he played forty eight minutes in those two games look, you're talking about against Milwaukee he, last year he took a hit and if we're sitting here talking about What's wrong with Kevin Durant two months into next season and and Tatum is first or second in the MVP conversation with different and, and and Tatum goes on and 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 you know beats the Bucks in this series and like like to me this series this is the series that makes Jason Tatum a superstar. So Paul George last year against Utah, right? We Great get series. the we get the notification right before right after game 4 that Kawhi's going to be out the rest of the series and it's like oh wow like they have to go into the Clippers have all this bad luck. They now have to go back into Utah, tied it to, you know, this looked like there was going to be their chance. And then they have to go into you. Now you, you, I assume you might go, well, Utah, that's more their fault, but Paul George getting 45 in game five to turn the series back towards them. 
then another 35 in game six, then going down three, one to the Clippers isn't great, but then 40, I think it was your 37 or 38 in game five to send it back to LA. Like those are one game superstar performances. Okay. I, I, I think, <laughs> I think there are, I am a big believer that there are again, between five and 10 of these guys in the league at any given time. And I think 10 is too many. I think there's less than 10. I, I, I think Paul George, I'd probably have, again, today, today, I probably have Tatum, Lillard, and, and George, and, and Paul George in some order, and then Booker as 12, and those would be the next four for me. I don't know. You know, maybe Paul George is nine. Uh, I don't here's, here's my thing. You can cut off at eight to 10, and normally I might say that sounds about right, but look at the ages of the players that we're talking about. There are two generations of players that are clashing and the overlap is causing there to be more than the eight to 10 guys. And that's the way I see it. Where like, again, you've got Jokic and Adekumpo and Embiid are in their mid twenties. You've got Doncic, Tatum. Um, they're in their early twenties. Uh, I mean, Steph Curry is, is in his mid thirties. Kevin Durant's in his mid thirties. Chris yeah. Paul's in his late thirties. But, but there are other guys you don't 20s. have on here who are coming. Anthony well, Edwards I, well, is coming. I, Zion's coming. Ja's coming. Is okay, coming? well, true or false? Elite players on the horizon. Thank you there for the lead-in. Okay. John Anytime. Moran. Shea Gilgis Alexander. Zion Williamson. Anthony Edwards. Kate Cunningham. LaMelo Ball. Like, these are players where, to me, they're so early on in their careers that it's like what we're seeing from Ja has been great. We also know that his inability to do mid range or pull ups, like you live with the shot diets that he has. You and live with the last shot he took against the Warriors and 100%. Because that was the only shot he was ever going to take. Right. Like you could look at SGA and be like, oh, he's an incredible talent. Look at what he's doing with OKC. And then he gets shut down and that takes away from the star potential. And you could look at the team that's around him, but then you could potentially look at other things and be like, well, maybe he's not a superstar. Maybe he's still a, a star. Like look at all the things he's doing well, but until you get to the playoffs and it's just a tough thing to do, but there's the push and pull of, of the team factor and Zion Williamson, who has played 85 games in three years. We've yeah. seen miraculous things from him. It's an um, issue. Anthony Edwards, again, like 20, right? 20 years old, 21 years old. Like what he's been able to accomplish with Minnesota. He's, he's 20. Yeah. He's 20, right. That's that's fantastic. Kate Cunningham is a rookie. LaMelo Ball, second year in the league. It, it, Cade was fantastic and uh, you know should have been up there in the Rookie of the Year award voting, although I, I still don't think he necessarily should have won. Maybe we're, should have gone to Mobley, but we're splitting hairs here. And, yeah. and LaMelo, again, like a great offensive talent. There's a lot to work with there, but a big reason why I didn't mention any of these players in the list beforehand is because let's go back to the, the thought process of how to acquire a superstar, right? It's the draft. The Knicks did not draft any of these players. They're all under the age of 30. They all have team control for eons. They're not going to be traded anytime soon, and they're not going to hit unrestricted free agency anytime soon. So well, I didn't list we, them because they don't even matter we in should terms say of where we're focused on with the Knicks in, in the next few years. Technically, because someone is going to make a comment about this. Yes, technically, Zion Williamson can become an unrestricted free agent in two years. It is not, not going happen. to happen. It's, it's, if effectively these the, these teams have team control for eons. Well, they will all get max contracts because if you're a team, you wave it in front of them, and you know it's the same tried and true method: get your money. And if you want to get out, you get out. But if they're true superstars, they're not going anywhere until at least one year remaining or, you know, at, at the earliest one year remaining or less on their, on their um, contracts. And that's, we're looking at like what 2026 for some of these guys, yeah. 2027, 2028. It's just, yeah. it's too long. It's too long for the Knicks to focus on it. And um, it would, it's not even like, Oh, could the Knicks afford it? It's just very often for the reasons I've stated, not even really an option. Yep. No disagreement there. So, Again, the challenge of acquiring these superstars, as I mentioned, teams don't really trade them. Uh, top talent has also been getting extended before they even hit the market. 2010, 2014, 2018, and 2019. Those were historic years for free agency, specifically unrestricted free agency. Big reason is LeBron James. He was an unrestricted free agent for three of those four years. And the movement around it has also been staggering. So then we have to ask, when's the next free agent window for the Knicks? I'm, I'm laughing for anybody who can't see and can't hear it. 
Yeah. So again, future unrestricted free agencies projected, of course, because these players can extend, like Nikola Jokic, who would be who just who, the season. Who literally just said the other day, <laughs> it's sign a supermax, right? So if you're if you're watching this, the numbers attached are the ages that they will be when the season starts for the, the year they'd be a free agent. LeBron James, again, he's going to be 38 years old. We just considered him a superstar and he should, and rightfully so. But then you also have to wonder about LeBron at 38. What the effect is there? What is LeBron, it if you want to come to New York, <laughs> we could play. It's our plan, Andrew, right? Yeah. We, we devised yes. the plan. Yeah. It's happening this summer. Watch. Gonna, oh, that's right. He's the man. The there's yeah. a superstar trade, Jeremy. That's there true. One year left, but it didn't even matter. Man, to 30. I, I can't express the craziness our group chat will have if there's just a, a rumor like a night a clutch floats out something to to shams and it's just like make it to the bank interest <laughs> right and our cap or no cap the lebron james plan oh and how the numbers would do on and it's that. just it's just 40 minutes of me no crying and complaining yeah. like stop no please, please no it's not happening no someone help yeah it's it's two All sides right. cap anyway. cap yeah. slide two no <laughs> end of the presentation thank you <laughs> thank you for coming to my ted talk all right 2024 right um some of us think he's a superstar others do not devin That's booker fine. be 27 years old interesting thing about devin booker um also just want to note carl anthony towns not here he's a star not a superstar I think we can all. I hope we can all agree with that. We can. Three of us. We can. Great. Here's there's no one I. There's no one I suggested. By the way, that you were missing. I just want that note. Perfect. Great. Um, James Harden not a superstar. Well, we were saying earlier. Not. We don't necessarily view it anymore. Any. I'm with you anymore. But I think he, he was like, been he in was. the conversation 100%. for a while. Oh, yeah. He, he was. Yeah. Okay. And you know so what? For same page. Yeah. For 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 one. For maybe one year to a couple of years, Russ was. I, I will say, and I hate he Russ is my least favorite player in the league, but I, I'll say that. Let's give everybody a fifty-two usage percentage, and then see. It was like forty-two. Come on now, <laughs> it's not not normal, John. Yeah. No, it's not. Okay, continue. Let's keep going. Okay, so Devin Booker is going to be twenty-seven in the year of our Lord two thousand and twenty-four. That is two years from now. Yes. Which, by my math, means he can he extend this summer. He so he'll be named to an all NBA team and he can get a five year NBA supermax contract essentially. Right. Which means Which three be- years added on to the current one that he's on. Well, or it, it, I think, it, yes, uh, no, it could actually be four. I need to. Oh, is it four? It might be because four. it's the supermax factor. So it, you can yes. extend for longer. Here's the yeah. thing about Devin Booker though. And why 2024 is so fascinating. Maybe a little less so for cat, but also could be of note. 2025 is the year that the salary cap is projected to increase. So if you're someone like Devin Booker, you could get a supermax. And the supermax is also dependent on the salary cap, right? But why would you want to get 35% of a salary cap that's lower in 2024 when you could also get 35% of a salary cap that's much higher in 2025? You would actually stand to make a lot more money. So it's the thought of especially with Chris Paul, right? His contract, he's non-guaranteed the last two years. But if you're the Suns, you're like, well, we're paying Mikhail Bridges. We're paying DeAndre Ayton. Um, we can maybe run it back again with Chris Paul, even if he's you know, ancient. And we get Devin Booker one more year. And then let's just see where the cards fall. Because that might be where Devin Booker's head is at. Why am I maybe. losing money on this when maybe. I could actually make a ton more and I get an unrestricted free agency. And if I don't really want to be in Phoenix for whatever reason, because again, if we're talking about Sarver and cash, uh, these these windows don't last as long as you might think. I know that DeAndre, not you, John, but in general, um, DeAndre Ayton is young. Mikhail Bridges is also young. Devin Booker is young. You have that much money. It's hard to fill in the gaps around you. And if Chris Paul sees a decline in talent at any point over the next three to four years, you mean Devin, Devin Booker? Booker I'm, no, no. If Chris Paul has a decline. In any oh way. yeah, yeah. Booker I, I thought is you saying, "What is my future here?" Because the margins to acquire talent are slim because we have Aiton and Bridges and my cap hold, and Chris Paul is maybe aging out. How are we going to build a contender right now? And that's why it's like if you're the Knicks, it's like again, it seems silly for us to even think or dream about any of these players. But the team that is what we're seeing in front of us could be vastly different in a few years. Not necessarily like contender, contender, but increasingly building up to that point. And that's where we're basically trying to get to. We want the Knicks to be as good, like even if it's a pretender, good enough where they are able to create 
room to add a a superstar yeah. when the time comes if they can. And that's yeah. where the Devin Booker angle is so fascinating to me. Sure. And then, of course, the connections with Leon Rose, blah, blah, blah. Um, Kawhi and Paul George, I don't see them going anywhere. Nope. Uh, but even at that point, they'd be 33 or 34 years old, respectively. Damian Lillard, 34 years old. The only reason that he wants to be traded, if he does want to be traded and run from the grind, Sweet. is so he can get the massive extension that would be paid to him, which would essentially be the Jimmy Butler or next James Harden contract. Good. Um, God bless. But worse, I'm going to pass on that. Um, so again, we're looking Might at two worse. years ahead. Even if Devin Booker decides, like, let's say he pushes his free agency back a year. We've just foreshadowed the next two years of superstars hitting the unrestricted free agent market or guys who are like in their thirties who might move with multiple years. It's safe to say we're not really interested in any of the ones that even might be possible. And they're the only one who might be is Dame, right? Sure. That's okay. fair. Cool. 2025. You got Jason Tatum at, at 27, Brandon Ingram at 28, Giannis Antetokounmpo at 31, Anthony Davis at 32, assuming that pretty much all these guys, except for Ingram, opt uh, out of their player option because they all have it. Ingram's interesting here because you, you, I, I'm looking at these teams. D- Davis, I don't, I don't We, we I, can I mean, put aside Anthony Davis. Just but let's put aside Anthony Davis. Giannis and, and Jason Tatum are both in some pretty, pretty solid situations, seemingly. Like yes, but again, what's three years from now for Giannis? It's Chris Middleton in his early 30s. Middleton's on the yeah Drew Holiday that's, in his mid to mid thirties. Um, like yeah, maybe you have some really nice supporting pieces like uh, Grayson Allen, um, who I was felt gross rooting for today, but I did. I mean, but Giannis is never like Giannis is not going to get traded. The Bucks but would sooner contract he, as a franchise. But that's not what I'm saying. It's not about trade. It's about hitting the unrestricted free agent market. And we could say, well, why would this player ever leave? And it goes back to the conversation of, we do not know these people. We don't know what they want. We don't know what they... like. I, if Giannis I, is looking at a team that's mostly an aging core and he says, I've loved my time here. I also see the writing on the wall on how we've traded a bunch of our picks and we can't really rebuild as easily. And maybe I can't get people to come to Milwaukee. Maybe I reconsider. That is essentially the devil's advocate to, well, why, why, like, isn't Giannis going to stay forever? Perhaps. And I I don't, I don't doubt any of that, but he, again, we know Giannis just so well. Um, He strikes me as someone who likes going up uh, to a drive through and ordering, what did he order? A bunch of like popcorn chicken or something. A 50 piece meal from Chick-fil-A after. There you go. Great. He had a 50 Um, You're not, you're not doing that in, well, I guess you can do it in New York, but um, probably, I, Long and the short of it is of the names on this entire projection and the ones that we've gone through so far, at least Brandon Ingram is the one that is a, very interesting to me. But we just That's said all. Brandon Ingram is not a superstar. I and I and, and I we quibbled about that because I'm like, give it a little bit more time. Okay, I, I get. I mean, look, we, we could we could say even with Jason Tatum, is there a time at which he looks at what the Celtics have been doing if they're struggling at any point, And I think they're a great team. Does he then say, well, I want to, and I'm not even saying New York. I'm just saying in general, the same thing for all of these guys. It's just generally speaking, the free agent movement. Again, it's like, who would have thought, but who would have thought in a year like 2016, that three years from now, Kawhi Leonard would leave the Spurs, a team that he always wanted to seemingly, you know, spend the rest of his career with. That was odd. And he doesn't want to be there. And he goes to Toronto and then he goes to LA. And then Paul George says, Hey, I want to go to LA. And then he comes with him or LeBron James spits in the face of everyone and says, <laughs> screw that. I'm actually not even staying in Cleveland when I have a clear shot to the Eastern Conference finals, let alone the NBA finals. I'm actually going to have a sabbatical in LA because I, I care about that. There's enough movement where if you get guys to all talk and even one becomes available, it can unlock the ability for so many others. Okay. All right. That's listen, all any, anything is possible. All right. Sure. M- moving on to 2026. Trey Young, again, He'd be 27. Uh, he needs to just improve his defense. That's that. That's such... Oh. And I don't know how you do that when you're that size. It's um, not going to happen. It's not. Luka Doncic, 27 years old. Again, like, does something different happen? I don't really know. But he just won his first playoff series, and he's an incredible player. Joel Embiid, 32 years old. A lot of wear and tear by that point, just generally. Kevin Durant, 38. And Stephen Curry, 38. So, you know, like, We've run through these teams. We've run through the players. We've looked, and, and there could be surprises. But how many guys are going to be surprises based on what we've seen? Where it's like, 
between 2023 and 2026, they are unrestricted free agents or they are players who fit what the Knicks are doing and are worth trading for, like not a Damian Lillard type. It's really tough. And that's the uphill. I don't want to depress people because I know people are going to be like, well, what's the point? I, there is a point, but it's really challenging. You're, you're preaching to the choir here. Um, I know. I mean, look, of all of these guys, Jokic, LeBron, Booker, Kawhi, Paul George, Dame, like we just, it's all the guys we just went through on the previous slide and, and when they're hitting their free agencies. Like, I don't know if it's two, I don't know if it's four, I don't know if it's six, whatever. A not insignificant number of these players are going to change teams in the next, whatever it is, three, four, or five years. It's going to happen one way or another. Is it going to be via free agency? I maybe, I guess, but like, um, but that's, that's kind of the thing I'm driving at where it's like, let's say you get a 2025 unrestricted free agent superstar and they say, Hey, you know, I want to go to this place. And then one of the 2026 guys says, you know what? I I'm not going to resign here. Trade like, me there. We've tried yeah. it. I want to go there. We just saw it with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George as an example. And again, if you had said that the Clippers would do that, the Clippers of all teams after they yeah. had. Blake Griffin that they had just resigned to this awful deal and like the way they've been able to execute it. Again, it goes back to, we do not know these people. We don't know what drives them. We don't know what they want. They could make decisions that we think are crazy. And for them, it works for them. It works. So it's just something to put out there as we think moving forward. But again, it's a, it's a bad news. Good news thing. Bad news. The Knicks will have to wait at least two, if not three years to bring in a superstar in his prime, or at least yep. one. The good news is time is on the Knicks side. I know me, I'm, I'm turning 39 in a week and a half. How much fucking time do I have? <laughs> well, the good news is it's not your time. It's the course. <laughs> time. Because here's the thing. If we're talking about 2025, like, again, I'm not saying all the players that the Knicks have are going to be on the roster. But if we're talking 2025 and let's say hypothetically they were Mitchell Robinson's 27. Right. Yeah. Obi Toppin's 27. RJ yeah. Barrett is 25. Uh, he is. Well, he's 20. He's turning 21 or he's turning 22 soon. So yeah, he'll be turning 25. Yeah. Um, Emmanuel quickly would be 26. Right. I mean, like yeah. the, the point I'm making is that when you put together superstars and how long it took them to really rise to the top of the mountain and get into their prime and get into that conversation. And you look at the Knicks and like, I like to think of the Raptors. Right? It took them a really long time to get from the rebuilding part where they drafted DeRozan. It took them like 10 years almost right? Yeah. to get to trading DeRozan for Kawhi Leonard. It was like eight, eight, nine years. And then they got him and they won a championship. And then Kawhi left, but they're cool with it because they won a championship. And I think people lose sight for how long these things really take. And it could very easily be seven, eight years. And if it's shorter than that, you're actually on the lucky side. So when you look at RJ Barrett being drafted in 2019, and let's say 2026 is the like 2025, 26 is the first year they're a contender. And it's the end of 2026. That's what his eighth year in the league. Like that's that you're right on time. You're right on track. So it, it's hard for us because we want everything. Now we want to see a good team now, but it does take time. The good news is that the Knicks have the time. The question of course is, is this something that the front office can do, right? Cause they can't just sit on their hands and wait for a superstar to maybe come. And, and then it doesn't work out. We saw how that came with Scott Perry and Steve Mills. It did not go very well specifically for Steve Mills. Um, but no, it's, it's <laughs> marginally no, it improving the team every year, trying to build consistently and maybe not exposing yourself in a way that hurts you on the back end. And that brings us to RJ Barrett. And there's this thought of like, is RJ a number one? Is he a number two? Honestly, the way I view it, assume the worst. And by worst, I mean like assume he's not a superstar, which is not a slight because it's really hard as we just had this conversation of to be a superstar talent. And if RJ Barrett becomes a superstar talent and you're operating under the assumption that he is not one, then you're adding one superstar to another superstar's team. And that's a pretty <laughs> important thing to do. <laughs> So <laughs> you have to read that. Why, why do you hate, hate RJ, RJ, Jeremy? Yes. Why do you hate RJ, Jeremy? That's a good point. Why do I? God, how dare you not say RJ He's Barrett is going to be superstar. Jimmy Butler plus LeBron James? Mm. Better. So a superstar plus a star. 
Yes, <laughs> exactly. Which we even out to, I guess, a lower tier superstar. But that apparently you know, doesn't that exist. doesn't exist. He's so, going to be the lower tier superstar that when he plays all the upper tier real John superstars, then he'll show everybody the what's real what. superstars. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The John. The, we're calling those the Macri. The John. The Macri tier. <laughs> yes. That's great. Yes. I like it. But uh, do you think that's fair, John? What I've just said, all of that, or do you just? I yeah. I I think if RJ Barrett. <laughs> Is someday in the conversation of being the second best player on a on a title team, we should all fucking dance the streets. Love it, great. Okay, yeah. and again, it's not a slight to RJ. It's just the reality is it's really goddamn hard to get a superstar. Like j- just real j- again, just real quick, just look at some of the names that we didn't even have included in the conversation that we we just had a few minutes ago. Like we, I think Jimmy Butler's name like just didn't get mentioned, right? You know, oh, it did. Uh, as, as a like right below that tier, right? Yeah, below it. like we we offhandedly dismissed Kyrie Irving, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't we shouldn't have. Like we, we certainly should have. Like, but like Donovan Mitchell, like name not mentioned, you know, at all. Like it, it, these are just cat. You're like, nah, that's nah, so fine. Okay, I, but, like, go go look at what these players have accomplished in the NBA, uh, and we're not even in the like are not in the conversation. 